One of the problems with test containers is that it's quite common to get into a place where you have duplicated information. In a lot of projects where I worked on, it's quite common to have a Docker Compose file that defines a set of resources that you need to put in order to run your application. And the team will use that Docker Compose file for a lot of purposes. For example, running every single thing that you need in order to run your application inside of your development machine. When you bring test containers to help you with integration tests, one of the problems that will happen is that you will define the containers that you need to run using the Fluent API. So now you end up with two definitions of the infrastructure that you need to run your tests. One that will run on automated tests and the other one that likely some people will be using for manual testing, for example. That may lead you to a bad place where you have one behavior on one place and another one on the other one. Because when you have those things duplicated, it's quite common that one of them will be stuck in the past. Since I was suffering with that problem, I asked myself if there's a better way of doing it. Why can't I run my Docker Compose since it's the natural way of defining my infrastructure? At the moment, there's no way of doing that with .NET. If you look into test containers for Java, for example, there's already a module to do that. Maybe one day we'll get it in .NET, but for now, there's one way of doing it, and I will show you that. I have here a small example to show you that. So in this example, you will find an infrastructure project. On this infrastructure project, what you can find is basically a simple message publisher that is publishing a message to Kafka. So we'll simulate the type of integration test that you may do. So on this case, I'm writing my tests, and if you go to my test, you can see that using XUnit, what I'm doing is that I'm publishing a simple message that is a string to using that infrastructure project that I told you, and then I'm trying to consume it from a given topic just to check if the message has been delivered. If we drill down into this fixture folder, you can find this Kafka test fixture. And here, as you can see, I'm using test containers to define the containers that I want for the sake of these tests. I'm doing this inside of uh, XUnit fixture. So this scope, this definition is common to all tests inside of that fixture. So on this case, what I'm defining here is simply the default configurations for the Kafka test container. I can always define here extra properties like username and password. Or for example, if we drill down into these default configurations by test containers, you can see that there are some default things that were defined for me and I can change them, for example. For example, the image of the container that is being used, the ports, and all those things. But what may happen is that if we go here into my solution in the left side, so I will click here, right? And now you can see here Docker Compose YAML. If we open it, you, we can find a really complex definition that maybe is the one that my team is used to use for simple things like, let's run these test containers and let's boot my application and run some manual tests. So now I have two different definitions that I need to keep in sync. This Docker Compose YAML, but also this one that is inside of my fixture. Let's put them side by side. And if we drill down into the configurations, you can find the typical problem that you have with this approach. For example, on the configurations that I have for my test containers, I'm using the version of Kafka 6.0.5, but in fact, my team is on using on Docker Compose the 7.0.5. Maybe someone came here and updated this thing and forgot that the test container also needed. So now I may experience different behaviors depending on the way that I'm doing those tests. So this is not optimal. This is not what we want. So what I try to do is that since for most of the things I'm using this Docker Compose, and it's not only a single container, as you can see, to boot Kafka, you need a lot of things. So why not use this one as the root for my test as well? So I want to look into test containers, but unfortunately in the .NET API, you can't do it. You can start a Docker Compose file. But in fact, there's another library that can help you do that. So first, let's uninstall test containers because we will not be using it. And let's install this one, Fluent Docker. Fluent Docker is a, a library that helps you build Docker containers using C Sharp with the Fluent API. 
But in fact, Fluent Docker has some things for testing. There's even some fixtures for XUnit. Once again, unfortunately, the fixture that exists at the moment is not compatible with uh, Docker Compose. So you need to do it for a single container. But we can go to that source code and learn some things and implement the thing that I will show you. Now that it is installed, let's go back to our source code. Let's go to this Kafka test fixture and let's remove test containers from here. We are not using them anymore. I will also remove this iAsync lifecycle from XUnit because I will not need it. Remove the required methods for that interface. And now let's start to configure Fluent Locker. First thing that I will be doing is defining here a new class that I will name Docker Compose Test Base. This is the class that I told you that is missing inside of Fluent Docker, but I created based on the one that exists there with small changes. And by the way, if you are a patron, you can access this source code, but let me explain you what is here. So here, what you can see is that I'm defining on the constructor a logic that will ensure that the Docker host already exists. So it will basically search for a given available host. You can find here all the logic, nothing special. And once it finds it, it will have it available so we can start our Docker Compose. So we'll build the Docker Compose by invoking a method that can be overrided inside of our fixture. And also we'll have here the logic that if something goes wrong, we dispose it. And when we are disposing, what should happen? Why? Because when we are starting our test in, with our fixture, we want in the beginning to, to spin up everything that is defined inside of that Docker Compose. And by the end, either if the test goes green or goes red or something goes wrong during the testing session, we want to bring everything down once again. Now that I have everything defined here, what I can do is to change my Kafka test fixture. So on the fixture, what we'll be doing is to define here that the fixture will inherit from Docker Compose test base. Let's implement the required members. And on this build method, we need to specify which Docker Compose we are starting. So the first thing is defining here what is the path that we are looking for. So as you can see, I'm defining here that I will have a Docker Compose inside of this fixture. It's not here. So what I will be doing is that I will go to my fixture folder add an existing item and I go to the root of that solution and I have there my Docker Compose that the team is using. So I will open and link it. So I don't have the exactly the same file there. I have a link to the file. And now I will go to the properties and I will define that this one should copy if newer. So now every time that there's a build and there's a new version of this file, this will go to the output directory. This way, I'm pretty sure that the file will be here. Now that I have the path to the file, what I will define is basically this composite service. How can I do that? Fluent Docker has this Docker Compose composite service that I will define. I need to provide a Docker host that I can access. As you remember, on the constructor, I'm ensuring that the Docker host exists. So if we go there, so on this Docker Compose test phase, you can see that I am calling this ensure Docker host method. And that method is discovering a Docker host for this Docker Composite service. So going back to our test fixture, now I'm defining here a set of configurations for this Docker Compose Composite service. I am providing here the file for the Docker Compose, Compose file path. Then I'm defining that uh, I should force to recreate when I'm starting, should remove orphans, and also should stop those containers when there's a, a dispose. So if we go back to our test, we can find here that I'm receiving here my test fixture through a class fixture. It can be a collection fixture as well if you need it. And on this case, then I'm sending a message to the publisher that I'm, that I'm accessing to the publisher through the fixture and asserting some things based on that. Let's run the test to see what happens. The tests are running and as you can see, now I can find here on my Docker desktop client, a fixture starting with a set of containers. This is basically my Docker compose. And you can see here all the containers that I'm starting. The test will run. And once everything is finished, it will dispose it. As you can see, the test has succeeded and now it's disposing the container. So to keep everything clean. 
Okay, and now it's completely empty. As you can see that Docker Compose went away and now I can run the test again and it will be green once again. So I'm using the same infrastructure. Please let me know in the comments if you are already using test containers, what do you think about this approach? I would love to hear from you. If you want more tips on testing, make sure you visit this playlist that I have for you. I will see you soon and in the meanwhile, keep it simple.